Hello guys, welcome back to Unique Arts. I'm Costco Picasso. So today we're going to be talking pretty briefly about this book, Contiki. So there is actually a film adaptation of this, which I also highly recommend you watch, but this is not explicitly about that. Um, that is about 12 years old. This story is uh, about 80 years old. It's getting there. Uh, but this is a great adventure story. Growing up in America, I was kind of, uh, growing up at least in the Midwest, I was raised to be, I don't think this was done on purpose, but there were certain things that made me proud to about where I was from. Uh, certain things like Illinois, where I grew up, fighting in the North during the Civil War, fighting for the North in the Civil War, and uh, like Abraham Lincoln being uh, from Illinois, well, for all intents and purposes, technically was born and raised in Kentucky, but you know, he served uh, as a politician from Illinois. I was proud of that. And then just the sense of adventure, but that was more tied to more regional characters. Not, I think you can relate to lots of adventure stories like Robinson Crusoe is a great story to relate to. And lots of old American Westerns, especially at least for the American mindset. But the uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer, like I felt like, you know, that felt very Midwest to me. They're more from, you know, Kentucky or whatnot, which borders Illinois. But it felt like they were the living the boyhood adventures that I kind of wanted to do as a boy. And uh, this is not an American story. And so that's perhaps why I never heard of it. I actually only had heard of it, uh, I heard of it a few years ago, and I only finally just read the book. I've seen the film a couple of times. Uh, but Kontiki is, I guess you would say, a Norwegian story. Five of the six participants in the writer, in the main guy, were Norwegian. Uh, one of them was Swedish. And then in some ways you could probably call it a Polynesian story because that's what they're trying to prove, right? And even like an Ecuadorian or Peruvian story because that's who the people would have been. So, the, okay, so the idea is that Polynesia is one of the most, the latest settled places on the earth. New Zealand itself was only settled about 800 years ago, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And uh, ethnologically speaking, we would say they came from Taiwan. And over the course of thousands of years, went to Taiwan, went to South, went covered Southeast Asia, uh, and then Melanesia, Micronesia, and then finally Polynesia. And that's true. I feel like that's uh, undeniably true. But I think the thesis here is also true. I think that there, I do believe that people also came from South America, from the Americas to Polynesia. And that's what Thor Heyerdahl's uh, thesis is, essentially. And it starts with the idea that he's trying to prove it, and nobody will give him the time of day uh, to read, like, his thesis, because there's, like, this is ludicrous. So he's like, I'll fine, I'll prove that it's possible that people actually did settle in Polynesia from uh, the Americas. And so he has to get a gang together to, like, go with them. There ends up being six of them. He gets Herman first, uh, but then he also gets... But he also gets Eric. Bent is the Swede, and I'm pretty sure... He, yeah, he's like the last guy to join. But also Torsten and uh, Knut. Um, also, they're all great Scandinavian names. Uh, but regardless, uh, he has to get the game together. They have to get funding. They have to get permission. They have to get, like, the wood, the specific type of wood from Ecuador. And it's, like, the rainy season, so it's really difficult uh, they're doing like the just the idea of being able to go on their craft in this adventure is kind of an adventure in of itself And I thought it was super interesting and then this adventure Despite being an adventure they travel over 4,000 miles in just over a hundred days floating on a raft in the Pacific uh, Before they do spoiler. I mean they survived they actually do make landfall in French Polynesia, but It's kind of simple once they get on the raft, but at the same time it's very charming you know, just the day-to-day -day stuff of seeing a whale shark and dolphins and sharks and when they finally see birds for the, like for a while, you know, for the first time in a while. It's just, it's great, uh, to put it simply, uh, simply. Very simple, but very entertaining and very, very great. It's a very quick read. It's about 230 pages. This, these are very small, easy-to-read pages, at least in my edition here. So, either way, very quick. And, uh... I don't think his theory is necessarily still popular. Like, I don't know what the general consensus is. I still think most people give credence to the Southeast Asia origins. Um, 
which is fair. But regardless, uh, perhaps someone who is more acquainted can let us know in the comments. Uh, but our, regardless, if you like a sense of adventure, I mean, think about it. Most most time when you think of adventure, unless you think of, like, the big exception I think of in many ways is the American West. Uh, before that, and, that, and that's mostly perhaps an American thing. Uh, some places, uh, other places, you know, are aware of it, but still. Uh, it's perhaps the colonial area. Uh, sorry, the colonial era. And then just... We think of it as a bygone thing, right? But this happened only like 80 years ago. This was like during your, your grandpa's lifetime. So that's kind of neat to think about. If anyone wants to build a boat with me, we can go replicate it maybe. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know. My wife probably wouldn't let me. But regardless, still super cool, uh, super interesting. I feel like it appeals to the nat like the natural sense of adventure that people have, perhaps more particular to men. Uh, but still, highly recommend you read it. Uh, and if you live near, if you live in Europe, Europe's not crazy big. I would just uh, recommend going to Oslo and going to the Kontiki Museum because there is one uh, in Oslo and it's the Norwegian capital. I've never been to Norway and hopefully I will one day. I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, if I'm in Oslo, I'm pretty sure I'll go to the museum because it's super cool. Uh, and this is something like, this is the kind of like adventure story, including Huck Finn and whatnot, that I want my my son to be raised uh, knowing about as well. So, and also for the film, if you can see it in like a theater setting, because I saw it the second time in a theater setting on campus when I was an undergraduate, like with the audio, surround sound, and stuff like that, it's phenomenal. Like just literally just chills. Like it was freaking great. So I also highly recommend that if you can uh, secure that as well as somehow. But regardless. Uh, I've been Costco Picasso. I will see you guys next time. Please feel free to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it as well as comment if you have uh, read the story. If not, correct your mistakes and your errors. Repent, as they say. I'll see you guys next time.